because he has been in Europe for a long, long time, playing and coaching in Austria, and also um, he's the founder of the international baseball community. You probably um, found his website, looking for players and looking for coaches. I think he has a pretty good insight from the experience his players and coaches made, and I'm really looking forward to your to your presentation, David. Thank you. Uh, well, it's since changed the name to Baseball Jobs Overseas, but uh, it was called the International Baseball Community back in 2013 when I launched it as kind of a, a hobby, uh, looking for import players to come over to play in Austria, and uh, it kind of grew into something uh, that we're pretty proud of today. Uh, I have Jimmy Jensen here, and he's uh, working alongside with me here, and we have a few other people that support us. Um, so I won't get too much into that. It's about the development of European baseball. George asked me about three weeks ago if I could do this presentation. I just said, yeah. And then as soon as I answered, I was like, crap. <laughs> because I don't know if I can really speak about the development of, base, uh, of baseball in Europe as a whole. Uh, but I do have the resources to reach out to a number of people. So I sent out, um, I sent out uh, a questionnaire or a survey uh, about two weeks ago and I had 40 responses just to gather some feedback and see what's going on in other parts around Europe. Uh, I do have an idea of which leagues are kind of thriving more than others and which clubs are kind of the leaders in those leagues. Uh, so uh, also as George mentioned I've been playing and coaching in Austria uh, I know the grind of European baseball from bottom to top and inside and out. I've been there. Uh, I've been at the schools working with the five-year-olds. Um, and also, I've been also the player manager of the Atmang Athletics, one of the leading organizations in Austria. And I've been playing along the way. So I know the grind that you're all going through. I have the utmost respect for everybody in here, especially those that are volunteering day in and day out to do this. Uh, so with that being said, let's move on. I want to show you a couple of visuals of the progress that I've seen in Austria. I'm going to relate a lot back to Austria because that's where I'm most comfortable. Uh, and then I'll extract information from the survey to talk about European baseball as a whole. So the next two pictures are going to show you uh, kind of how far Austria has come in recent years. Just, just take a look at that for a second. Just absorb it. Just absorb what you're seeing. All right. How many of you have actually seen this photo before? I know Clemens has seen it for sure. Let me see it. Okay, I, I was expecting a few more people to put up their hands because this did go kind of viral worldwide within the worldwide baseball community. And... Uh, it kind of put Baseball Austria on the map. Uh, and uh, we've come a long way since this photo, but it was only, I think that was what? That was recent, that was that four years ago. Four years <laughs> ago. Um, but let's try to ignore that car for a second if we can, <laughs> and let's look at the field that it's on, okay? I've played on this field a number of times the last 15 years, and I can speak uh, from experience that, that is, that's gravel you're playing on. We call it the parking lot because it is a parking lot. <laughs> it, it doubles as a parking lot for the local soccer team or football team for you British folk that are here. I don't want to confuse you. Um, and uh, every, every, every team dreaded going to this ballpark and playing at this ballpark because of the nasty hops, nobody would slide. You, you know how it goes. Uh, well, they just got a new ballpark. And... It's, it's like night and day. Now everybody wants to go play in Dornburg. So this is kind of a visual representation of how far baseball's come in Austria. They were kind of the last ones to kind of come along with the ballpark side of things. But from an organizational standpoint, uh, Austrian baseball, I feel, has made a lot of good progress, which we're going to get into more soon. So the next is a video clip of the 25-year anniversary of the Atmang Athletics, the club that I've been a part of. I put this documentary video together uh, in 2016 was the 25 year anniversary. I'm just gonna st show you two little clips in this video. One kind of early on to show you where it was when they, when they were founded in 91. And then 
something up more up to speed in 2016. So I'm going to get Jimmy to help me out with this. He's going to go to the 2:30 minute mark, and as soon as that thing disappears. Yeah, just just leave, leave this the thing still for a sec. There we go. There you go. And now it's back. <laughs> oh, we have to see this clip. <laughs> this way to see. Two, there we go, 2.30. Okay, we need sound with it too if we can't possibly. This should be sound. That's okay. You'll, you'll see it. You don't need the sound. The sound just makes it a little more dramatic, that's all. So there's going to be a little, a little action scene here. And this is, I think, their first ever game, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? You think I slide, man? <laughs> yeah, you need to watch that a few times because the guy sliding in, you don't notice because you're 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 kind of laughing at the the relay guy there. Um, but the guy sliding in totally face plants as he yeah. slides in. Um, so now we're at 9:30. This was in 2016, um, and you'll see just the community, how many people are out to the ball game. The beautiful ballpark, um, the professionalism of it, uh, it's just thriving, or was thriving. It's kind of taken a downward turn the last year, but we're still going strong. So you can really see that in 25 years, it's come quite a long ways. And when you think of 25 years uh, in, in baseball relevancy, it's in its infancy right now. Baseball still in its infancy in Austria and many countries like Austria. Maybe not so much the Netherlands or Italy who have been playing baseball for a long time. Uh, you can go ahead and stop it now. So I'm going to start off or continue on talking about just my observations uh, in Austria in the past decade and then we're going to dive more into the survey and extract some information moving forward as soon as they figure out how to get that. <laughs> Perfect. So first of all, in Austria, I've seen a lot of improved play. Uh, so first, first of all, it's become more competitive. When I first came to Austria, the top teams kind of dominated the league. The bottom teams were quite a step below within the first division. Now it's quite balanced. It's expanded to uh, a 10-team league now. Um, so, and it's quite competitive from top to bottom. The bottom teams can beat the top teams in any given weekend. Uh, there's more importing going on, so each team has at least one import. Most of them will have two import players, often an import coach, uh, one through ten, and down into the second division. There's more kids than I've, than I've seen in a long time. Uh, some programs are thriving more than others, but I'm seeing a lot more kids than there used to be. Roster depth is not quite as prevalent, but it's still, there's more and more. I, I remember the old days, you're lucky if you have nine guys when you show up at a, at a game somewhere. Uh, now, there's a consistent 13 <laughs> if you show up somewhere. Uh, but it's one through nine more than anything is more of a balanced lineup. I, I'm sure Clemens can attest to it. Seven, eight, nine used to be pretty much automatic outs. Not the case anymore, uh, even for the import pitchers. Uh, high impact Austrian players. There's a lot more Austrian players that can dictate the outcome of the game. A lot more Austrian players that are playing at a level similar to or even better than some of the imports that are coming in. Uh, second division teams are transitioning from hobby to, okay, we, wanna, we want to take this a little more serious. They're starting to invest more in bringing imports, facilities, uh, and so the second teams are now picking up the slack and making a drive for the first division. Uh, in recent years, uh, Austria's had a lot of international success. In 2018, uh, they went to the Pony, they set a team at the Pony World Series, which was pretty cool. I was sitting, uh, I was visiting family back in Canada, sitting on the couch, and I turned on the TV, and there's the Pony World Series and a team from Austria, and I didn't even know. I thought that was pretty cool to see that. Um, this year they advanced to April for the first time. Right, Clemens? Oh, 
Last time it was 2007, but it was because somebody dropped out. But this is the first time we qualified for Arnold. Yeah. And I know for a number of years, they had a world ranking around 55 for a number of years when I first came, and they've moved all the way up to 27. So I look to Austria as one of the countries that are on the rise in Europe and that are doing a lot of good things. Uh, they're more professional. As I mentioned, expanding to 10 teams, two divisions. Uh, new ballparks are popping up. Since 2017, I've seen four. Well, one was just basically upgraded or renovated. The other are brand new ballparks. Um, we have another one uh, that will, is being built for 2019. That's in two years. Uh, I think the media presence is one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest things that I've noticed in recent years, uh, especially in, in the last two years. Um, websites obviously are more informative and everything across the board in Europe. But uh, social media, I think a lot of Austrian clubs, a couple in particular, are doing a great job in social media, marketing their team to the local community, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Live stream, which we're going to get to in a second, uh, I would say this is probably the leading live stream in Europe. Um, I know they were asked to come up and cover the Super 6 series, most recently up in the Netherlands, and they did the Austrian final, and that's the Atmang Athletics TV. Uh, yeah, we're just getting a lot more coverage in the TV and the newspaper. Um, game day, family oriented, uh, has become more of a focus in the past. Uh, I know when I showed up, there were a lot of drinkers and smokers just hanging out, partying, didn't even know anything about baseball, watching the games. It was a little bit shocking for me, and I always said we need to change this more to a family environment, a place where families feel like they can bring their kids. And now, today, that, that is exactly what it looks like, and not just an that thing across all of Austria. Just more professional looking, relating back. When I first came, it was 1999. I was one of the first imports. That year was the first year they started importing. And I remember showing up to the first practice and one guy was wearing high knees with no socks. And you don't see that anymore, thank God. Uh, but so we're looking, or they're looking a lot more professional, especially to the common Austrian that doesn't know a lot about baseball, that like shows up to the park, it looks very professional. Uh, creative fundraising, uh, I could go into a little bit of detail here, but I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward. The athletics uh, have hosted uh, a tournament called Finkston Ball. How many of you have heard of Finkston Ball here? How many of you have spent long nights at Finkston Ball? Albert, I know has. Yeah, so, uh, this, this, I think Finkston Ball is in its 21st anniversary this past year, and uh, it's, it's a baseball and softball and music festival all combined, and it grew to a point where it was too big. It was bringing in too many people, uh, so they had to contract the music side of things out to uh, a local entertainment company, um, but this has been the funding that has helped them to build a new stadium, to bring in imports year after year after year, and continue to develop. Uh, can we take a peek at Ace TV if it works? I don't want to go down some rabbit hole here, but I just want to take a look. Just click somewhere in the live stream, sure. just anywhere in the live stream where you would see there. That's a good spot. Okay, the internet connection is not bad. The hot is it's a lot clearer than it appears right here. Well, now it's kicking in a bit. Of course, we show an error. <laughs> okay. So, multiple angles. Uh, they have a commentator. Uh, it's getting more professional. And honestly, I, I go and I, I, I take clips from around Europe, and I've been looking around Europe to see what clubs are doing. I don't see a lot of live stream, but in 2018, more and more hopping on board with that. Again, it's one of those things. It's time consuming, it takes some time. Mostly, it's one angle. From the tech stuff, we have at least two clubs that do it. Across. Yeah, yeah. More and more clubs are doing the one camera angle, which is which is good. It's a good start. And then if you can progress to to multiple angles, then so I, I see that, and we're going to get into that more across Europe. This is just my uh, observations in Austria at this point. Uh, some of the lessons learned uh, from the athletics over the years, through my observation or my eyes, I've seen them go through ups and downs over the years. Um, 
consistency in the school program, having a consistent school program was probably where they dropped the ball off a few times along the way. There were a few years where we just weren't in schools at all. And now we're in schools constantly, and there's a school cup at the end of the year, uh, and uh, we have basically kindergarten through, through grade four. We're going to all the schools in the region, inviting them out at the end of the school year to a school cup over the course of five days to get 500 kids. Uh, continuity in coaching was another kind of pitfall early on, especially when I first came. There really weren't a lot of longer term coaches. There was a lot of turnover in the coaching positions at the youth level. Uh, they had imports come in and coach kids, and we all know imports come in and then they're gone and the new ones come in. Uh, they've learned their lesson from that. Now there's consistency in the coaching at every level. Utilization of parents uh, is something that in, before, if parents put up their hand and they wanted to, to help out because their kids on the team, then they'd accept it. Now they're more proactive, more, more proactive at reaching out, asking parents to assume a certain role. Whoops. Uh, creating a family atmosphere, we know that's a big one. Uh, I touched on that earlier. I'm doing a lot better job of that so that kids are coming out to the ballpark watching the games. Uh, but more of a family atmosphere within the whole organization. Winning championships uh, and the youth program, like finding a balance between the two was an, was an area where uh, there was a lot of focus in, in the late 2000s, before 2010, on winning a championship, which they accomplished in 2008-10. Uh, but at that point, uh, there was the youth program, I wouldn't say was neglected, but uh, there wasn't as much focus on the youth program as there maybe should have been some of those years uh, leading up to those championships we weren't in schools at all. Uh, and whole, uh, leaders in key roles was something that we had early on, and now we're struggling to keep leaders in those key roles. Uh, a lot of people that were motivated and ready to roll up their sleeves and get to work early on uh, have moved on from the team, have moved on from the organization, uh, whether they're busy with work or they have families or whatever the case is, and they're having challenges replacing them. Uh, I feel like sometimes that we could have kept somebody in a certain role if we didn't overwork them. Maybe a little too too many duties, or too too many. Uh, they were wearing too many hats within the organization. Got a little burnt out and moved on. Sometimes we need to get more support. Parents are a good one for that. Okay, so the survey feedback. I, I had 40 clubs respond from across Europe. This, and I asked them a variety of questions, trying to find out what, what their viewpoint is on the development within their league, within their club. And this, these are some of the results. Uh, first of all, these are the countries that are represented in the survey. Some responded more than others. Some I didn't hear back from. Everybody's busy. I get it. But I think 40, 40 responses in two weeks isn't, isn't too bad. Some of you here responded. Uh, so this pie chart showcases I'm using a three, three rabbit custom fungo here to showcase that this half or this over 50% are where I'm going to focus a little more. I tried to extract some information out from to see what these clubs, these clubs are, uh, these clubs are doing cr uh, well. Trying to pull up some information to see if we can pick up a few things that maybe we can bring back to our clubs, our organizations, and do a better job with. Uh, so. 10.5% said their league has dramatically improved. That's some good news. Good progress. That's where I feel Austria is. I wouldn't say Austria dramatically improved. I would say there's good progress going on in Austria. Uh, I'd like to see more than slightly improved in 10 years. But as long as you're improving, you're making some progress. Uh, the red is a little bit, those are more of um, the, the countries, the smaller market countries where uh, Baseball is still really in its infancy. They're just kind of getting started. Uh, so there hasn't been a lot of improvement in 10 years because it hasn't even been around 10 years, or maybe it's been around 10 years. Uh, so these are two points that I pulled out. Five out of five Austrian clubs uh, said either responded good progress or dramatically improved. So they're on the same page with me. I, I'm noticing the progress. Clemens, would you agree? Yeah. Okay, six out of six. Uh, 
and four to four Czech clubs also responded in a positive way, saying good progress. Of course, we had other clubs from other countries also saying good progress, um, but there was also some of those clubs from the same league would respond slightly improved. So uh, I want to take a look at these two countries, and I, I looked at some of the answers that I got from them and extracted what I could to see if we could take away something today. Here are the four kind of key factors that I pulled out of the information I put together. Um, improved, improved youth development was one of the key things that clubs said or attributed their success to. Uh, importing of players and coaches, better facilities, and year-round facilities, and locals setting their goals higher. They're starting to look outside of their domestic leagues or their national team. So let's look at the first one, the improved youth development. Uh, I narrowed it down to a lot, all the responses down to two things. They kind of fell in the category of um, attracting youth to baseball and then keeping them in baseball. Those are the two, I think, pretty common sense aspects that we all struggle with uh, in Europe. Whoops, went too far there. A little trigger happy. Uh, so attracting youth to baseball, it, I put in red and in bold, this was the one that I kind of saw in the response quite, quite often and one that I also agree with, is that we need to get into the schools uh, super early, at five years old, six years old, start recruiting them before they kind of decide on their own, hey, I want to go be a soccer player, I want to go be a rugby player, whether you're in Ireland or, or wherever. Um, if we get to them early, that's a way to kind of get them hooked on baseball before they even really can think for themselves. <laughs> Uh, and often, so be in the schools often because you're not going to get them out unless you're consistent, consistent, consistent. Baseball is always in their face. Uh, I know in Atlanta we have a very good youth program right now and a lot of it's a trip to the schools. Uh, we're teaching the teachers how to do a simplified version of baseball, providing them with the equipment and the instructions, and then they continue where we left off. And then, like I said earlier, they all come and play in a school cup at the end of the school year. We have about 500 kids that come out and uh, we have the mascot out, they get trophies, they have a good time. And it's really, really beefed up our youth program in recent years. Summer camps, summer camps is another way to get new kids out, offering a summer camp, come out, try baseball. And then of course the kids that are already in baseball, that's just gonna, uh, they're gonna maybe invite their friends or whatnot. Uh, home game family promotions was a common response. Someone said make it free for kids up to seven. I know that we do first year's free. Whatever age you start at, it's free for the first year. Does anybody else do that here within your organization? No membership fee for a new kid. Uh, promoting English is something that a lot of parents, maybe not so much in Ireland, but uh, in Austria, the parents love the fact that all the kids that come are going to also learn English because we have, every single year, we have two Americans or Canadians or Australians uh, supporting the youth program and supporting the youth coaches and the kids are le learning English and by the time they're 16, 17, you can't even notice the difference whether they're a native English speaker or not quite often. Like Andre Gruber or Clemens, for example, you can't tell Clemens is Austrian half the time. Uh, so their English really is at a high level. Uh, I think we won't go down that pathway <laughs> with those two links, but have a strong online presence. We've already touched on that. I was going to show you uh, what they're doing on their on their Instagram accounts and on their Facebook accounts. Um, my touch on it is parents are on Facebook, kids are on Instagram. But if you're not on Instagram at this point, I think, in my opinion, you need to get on Instagram, period. Because the kids are on the phone all the time. And on Instagram, you, it, I don't know how, many, how much you're familiar with it, but I know on Instagram, you can, you can see what's going on in your area. So if, if I go on and post something and I say the location is Atene and Kukai, Austria, then everybody in Atene that's on Instagram can see Oh, look what's going on in that night, baseball. And if you're on there constantly, then baseball's always in their face, and that's a way to just get kids thinking about baseball. Uh, friend days, we know about that. Showcases, inflatable cage. 
Who here has gone with an inflatable cage to an event somewhere in the, in the area? I know I've done it. It's not fun. But once you get it set up, it's fun. But the setting up and tearing down sucks. But it works. Kids, kids that want to try swinging a bat, every kid wants to try swinging a bat, hitting the ball. So that's something that's been, uh, I know a lot of people are, are doing that in Austria. A lot of clubs are doing that in Austria to good success. All right, I'm going to use Clemens' old team, the Diving Ducks, as an example here. But uh, a lot of the responses I got for retaining youth to adulthood, um, a lot of them centered around continuity and quality coaching, which we've talked about, and I think we all know that. And you have a, a knowledgeable quality coach. Uh, and I want to reflect back on what Jeremy was saying earlier as far as getting the di diagnosis correct. If you don't have a coach that can diagnose what the problem is, then how are they going to improve? You're going to just keep, keep developing bad habits. So continuity and quality coaching, easier said than done, especially if you're in one of these countries that are still where baseball is still in its infancy. Uh, how, that's where imports come in, and that's where we help a lot of teams out with. Uh, involving parents, it, this is a way to allow your coaches to focus on coaching. Get the parents to come in and do the organizational side. Okay, so the parents take care of the organizational side, coaches focus on coaching. Uh, make it fun, we know that one. More games, yeah, we want to do that as much as possible. Sometimes easier said than done. I know my son, who's turning 16 pretty soon, grew up within the athletics program. I moved here at one year, one year old, and uh, he has two teammates, a team of three. How do you play games with a team of three? Because he happened to be in that birth year where there's that huge gap in our youth program. Sucks for him, right? So we had to get creative. We had to kind of work together with other clubs in the area and make a team out of all those clubs and then travel three hours to Vienna one year. But yeah, that's, that's where we have, that's for those of you that don't live in Europe or don't know European baseball as much, uh, that's what we're dealing with often. So long day for kids, maybe play one game instead of two, more frequent, but single single game in a day. Summer camps again, and offer two pass came up quite a bit as well for the hobby kids and the kids that are more, more motivated. The hobby kids will graduate on to play on that second or third team within the organization. So as I talked about earlier, Clemens' team, his former team anyway, uh, I would say are the leaders in Austria and a club that we can look to as to doing things right with their youth program. Uh, I'll touch on the success that they've had. In 2018, their under 12, under 14, and under 16 teams were all national champions. Their under 18 team finished second. So the proof is in the pudding. They're doing really well right now. They weren't always kicking butt like that, but now uh, they've, they've got a successful formula. I contacted the president and I said, what are you guys doing? What are you doing right there? And it's pretty simple. They're getting former players as coaches at each level, and then they're supported by parents and imports. Uh, instead of having one coach coaching all levels. Sometimes that's what we, all we can do. I get it. But that's what we strive towards. If we strive towards that, then I think we're going to have a lot more success like the Ducks are having in the uh, near Neustadt, Austria. Okay, retaining youth continued. Uh, developing that club pride. Uh, that family atmosphere was another major point. I think it's a, a, a no-brainer, but it doesn't hurt to revisit. That's an important way to keep kids on board. They feel like they're part of a family. They feel like they're part of a team. And uh, so organizational gatherings, barbecues, things like that, are just going to um, be more effective at keeping kids on board as opposed to everybody going their own way at the end of the game or whatever the case is. Uh, this is why I put Clemens in this picture. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be here today either, so I keep picking on him. But practice dress code promptness. Uh, I think, Clemens, you're probably one of the leaders in Austria at saying, making sure the kids are looking good, looking sharp. And what does that do? It just makes them, again, feel like they're part of the team. Now, of course, back 
in the U.S. or wherever, uh, that's a common thing. That's something you, don't, you wouldn't really think about. But I've seen it for years where there's kids showing up with jeans, like a new kid showing up with jeans or whatever, and it takes them months before they actually start showing up in anything that even looks like a baseball outfit. Not anymore. The athletics now are head to toe, looking the same for each youth level, and that just makes them feel more like they're part of a team, keeps them around longer. Uh, recognition of successes, awards on social media, getting adults, the adult players more involved with the youth. Sometimes have a, an adult player come out to help out and support with the youth program because those are their mentors, that's who they look up to, and involving them at the home games as bat boy, bat girl opening ceremonies. Uh, paid youth coaches I have there. This is kind of a, a topic with a lot of clubs that are at that, that transition point. You've kind of grown to a certain, uh, certain size as an organization. At what point do you start paying youth coaches as opposed to asking them to continue to volunteer their little bit of free time after work or whatever on the weekends? Um, so I pulled those, those clubs and these are the responses of how many clubs actually pay at least one youth quote coach in the program. And I was actually a little surprised to see that more than half uh, of the 40 clubs that responded are saying, yeah, we're paying someone. Okay, so a lot of the clubs, obviously those leagues that have, that have clubs that have grown beyond a few hundred members uh, are, have a big organization and need to start paying somebody to do it. When you're small, then I think you know you need to start. You need to keep with the volunteers. Who knows what the answer is? But I know at some point you need to look in that direction if you want to retain quality coaches. Uh, one more, one more uh, page on retaining youth because it's an important topic. Because I know we don't exist if we don't bring in kids and keep them there. Uh, so opportunity to develop, giving them that opportunity to develop. Uh, if you don't already have a camp or if you don't already have an academy in the area, at least point out where they can go, within the country or nearby. Okay, I got five minutes, so I'm gonna maybe speed up a little bit. Plus I'm getting thirsty and that IPA down the street is calling my name. Uh, membership growth in the last 10 years. 36.8% uh, said less than 50 in the last 10 years as far as a membership growth base. Again, these are countries more in their infancy. Uh, then I looked at some of the clubs that are thriving. Uh, for example, Rossi Bruno in Czech Republic, doing a great job. I know, uh, again, the Ducks from Austria are one of those clubs that are in the green and in the orange there. Sorry, in the orange and the, the blue, okay, with 300 or more members in the last decade. Um, so we got our work cut out for us, but those that have reported the most growth, uh, also happen to have the most active uh, school programs based on the survey. Uh, they report at least one, that they're paying at least one youth coach. They've been importing regularly for years, only got a few minutes left, and have a strong social media presence. There's, there's a point I, I want to get to though. I'm not even close. Here we go. Importing players have closed. I got at least another 45 minutes, I think. Um, I'm going to skip here, skip that. Importing trends, because this is more of uh, our area of expertise in, in Europe, or kind of how imports are playing a role in the development of baseball in Europe. So more and more teams are importing these days. Uh, obviously our website helps facilitate that, being a platform where you can actually go and see a list of players that are want to go play in Europe. Um, quality importing has increased. Has increased. Uh, so I put a picture of Jimmy up there because I consider him a quality import. He came to Austria in 2015 and although the, the level was lower than uh, his abilities by a fair amount and he dominated as a pitcher, he wasn't, he, he, he wasn't afraid to roll up his sleeves, get involved, be a team leader, uh, if somebody made an error behind him, he would look at him and say, I got you. He had this positive um, positive aura about him, worked with the kids, and that leaves a long-lasting impression when you get a guy like that. Of course, that's easier said than done again, 
Sometimes you get in these duds that are imports or guys that don't really have that kind of attitude. But I feel like more and more teams are learning what they're looking for, what to bring in. Uh, second division as well, had 41 import <coughs> players and coaches in 2018 across Europe. Uh, let's take a look at, I'm going to skip ahead because we have to get going here. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm getting cut short, two minutes. Uh, better facilities, there's a lot of better facilities, let's take a look at a few of them. I'm going to pick on Dornburn again, here's before and after. Oh, I don't miss those days. <laughs> but either do they, I'm happy for them. Uh, there's the, the old dugout I had to sit in. That's the visitor's dugout. And look a lot better. There's Wiener Neustadt. So not only is their youth program thriving, they have a brand new clubhouse, which uh, houses the import players, and uh, stands, and renovated. Uh, I believe it's all renovated as well. And Trebich, so a new indoor facility. France, I know there's a couple of turf upgrades. Poland, a new ballpark. In Bonn, there's a new infield. This is only recently. I mean, that's what I put together in a few days. I know there's a ton of upgrades going on. I'm always reading it on Facebook or Instagram. I'm always seeing more and more and more clubs investing in facilities. Local setting higher goals. This is probably the lead example in recent years. This is Matteo Bocci out of Italy, who's playing for the Texas Longhorns. Uh, he first started out, uh, where did he sign first? Odessa, I believe. Yeah, and uh, that was through the International Stars College Program in Arizona. Uh, if any of you have players that are looking to go play college, let me know. I can introduce you to Boomer or uh, Mara Mazzotti, who are running the, the college program every year, and they're having more and more success every year. I wanted to show you this video because it's pretty cool. It gives you some goosebumps, so go look for it on Twitter if you want to watch it. Uh, but here are a few, of, a few of the guys around Europe that in 2018 uh, were playing college baseball in the U.S. Coming from all over Europe, too. More and more we're seeing, and this is just a handful. I, I didn't want to throw 40 slides up or 30 slides up from 2018. Do I got a minute left? Oh, he's, he's, he's making the walk. Okay. All right. And one last thing. We are um, sending a lot of Europeans to play winter ball in Australia. The, the ones in bold uh, are just are in Australia right now. Um, and the ones that aren't in bold for the last year or two are going to play winter ball in Australia. So if you have any players that want to continue to develop, continue to work or just play a lot more baseball, then we can help with that. You can reach me at, and I got business cards. There it is. <laughs> okay, so there's my email. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, if you want any information from the slides or from the polls, if you have any questions about imports or any, uh, what any club in Austria or across Europe is doing. I, I have a lot of insight into each league based on the, the imports that have been coming and going, a lot of the contacts in those leagues. Uh, so if you have any curiosity or any questions, I'm available. I'll be around later for a beer and uh, hope to meet most of you guys here. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.